Welcome to the Time to Fly podcast. It's time to give your business wings and take flight to achieve more impact, influence, and income with unique perspectives, tools, and tips from successful entrepreneurs and business professionals to help your business fly. Here to educate, encourage, and entertain you with their own unique perspectives and experience, plus sharing anecdotes of growing up as cowgirls. Here's your host, Jill Fleming. Welcome to this episode of Time to Fly, Give Your Business Wings. I'm your host, Jill Fleming, and today I am so excited to be here with Elaine Swan. Elaine is nationally known for her expertise in the field of etiquette and lifestyle coaching. She is the founder of the Swan School of Protocol and has traveled the country sharing her advice with businesses and universities such as Bank of America and the Wharton School of Business. With 17 independently owned and operated etiquette schools across the United States, Elaine strives to empower her fellow Swan School owners to provide world-class etiquette and social training. Elaine is the author of two books, Girls Have Style and Let Crazy Be Crazy. She has appeared on news and talk shows such as The Today Show, Dr. Oz, CNN Headline News, Access Hollywood, Inside Edition, and more. She's been featured on radio and quoted countless times in online publications and newspapers such as the New York Times and the Chicago Tribune. Elaine's passion is inspiring others to be well and live well. Welcome, Elaine. Thank you. Glad to be here. So Elaine and I go back several years. She is one of the first people I met when I came to San Diego. I met her at a women's networking group where she was actually the presenter. Yes. And I was just drawn to her. I knew I had to speak with her. And I went up to her after the event and her amazing husband, Chris, was there which I was so envious of. I was like, wow, a supportive husband. That is awesome to see. Yeah, (laughs) he's a good guy. He really is. And I remember meeting with you, Elaine, and asking you to meet for coffee. And we actually meeting for coffee and you're like, at coffee, you're like, I don't do this that often. (laughs) So Elaine is an introvert who does very well as an extrovert. (laughs) <laughs> we've yeah, talked about yeah. that quite a bit we have we really have and when I met Elaine she was challenging herself to get out more and to put herself out there more you know what it's so funny because I thought about you and your impact this morning because lately I you know I kind of went back inside my little thing and and I just come out and I do stuff and I go back in <laughs> and I honestly I got back into that bad habit And just yesterday, I had a telephone conversation with one of my team members, and she's also a very good friend of mine. And we were talking about strategy. One of the marketing things we talked about was she's like, you know, you need to get out (laughs) and network and go to places where you can meet people so you can say, hey, the Swan School, we're in Carlsbad and we've got classes for kids all the time, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. (laughs) And I thought about, I met you when I was challenging myself to get out. And so of course I've called back into a shell and Mm -hmm. um, it's so easy for me to just come here to this office every day. Now I took the inventory and yes, I need to get out because I'm doing that thing again. (laughs) And we love you, Elaine. We want you to come out. I love you too. (laughs) I know I gotta get out. It was really amazing to meet you and to develop our friendship and then just to see how far you've come. I've been so enjoying watching your journey and then getting to see you on Good Morning America and the Today Show and all of these amazing places. It really has been a journey. And I'm so thankful for the day that you came to me and, and said, hey, let's get together for coffee. And even though I was shaking in my boots and thinking, oh my gosh, I just want to stay by myself. You know, I'm glad you really encouraged me to, to come out. Aside from the fact that, you know, I got so much out of just that moment there and all of the people that we've been able to connect with, I have a lifelong friend in you. And so with that, I'm so, so thankful. So from that one day and that one moment, just really, I'm glad you stepped out and then pushed me out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I recognized you as soul family and uh-huh. you, were just, you were just not getting away. <laughs> So Elaine, tell me a little bit about what you've been up to. Sure. So with the Swan School of Protocol, I'm having such a blast right now. It's been really, really quite a journey because when 
when you and I met, I was at a place to where I was really looking for opportunities to continue to grow as an independent consultant and independent trainer and take my business to a level to where I was really, you know, getting connected with some great people, great organizations and figuring out my programming and so forth. And now cut to the chase five years later, I have really, really dug my heels in and I'm building this business. My goal is to create something that is long lasting, that, that leaves a legacy behind. And so I made a pivot in my business and that pivot took me about two years to really develop. And then I launched it in 2017. What that is, is a licensing program. And it sounds like as you transitioned, as you were figuring it out, you went from being independent, individual, it's all up to you, to creating a business that has scale, which has really given your business wings. Yes, it has given my business wings. And I tell you, when I say wings, I'm so, so thrilled because the, the licensing program that we created is where we train individuals. They come in, we train them and give them their certification as an etiquette consultant. And in addition to that, we license them so they can operate a Swan School of Protocol in their city. And so what those individuals do is they provide workshops and classes and seminars and one-on-one -on -one sessions where they're teaching etiquette training and personal and professional development to children, teens, college students, and adults. And the thing that is so phenomenal that makes me so excited about this is just last week, I got someone who contacted me and they said, hi, we're an organization in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're doing a program for young gentlemen. They're going to go through this program. It starts in September and it goes through February 2020. And we'd like to know, can you come and do a workshop with them once a month starting in September? And I said, not me, but I have someone in the San Francisco Bay Area that can come and do the workshop. And they were like, okay. It's been a seamless process. So of course I referred them to our consultant that's in the Bay Area. She's connected with them. They're working towards putting together the program and everything. And because of this foundation that we have created to when we refer people to, to one of our Swan School owners, it's a seamless process. And so the wings of that is that we took what we have here locally and spread it. And so we now have 17 independently owned and operated Swan schools throughout the United States. And that, my love, is wings. Wow. That's <laughs> the business amazing. is flying. Yeah. And we, we, we launched in November 2017. We hold our training once per quarter. And so on, uh, in March was our first one for 2019, and we licensed four people in March, and we have another group of people who are coming on in June. And so that's what our next training is. It's going to be June. And so it's so, so great because not only are we serving individuals in other cities throughout the United States, but these are jobs that are being created where these are budding entrepreneurs, women who are looking to own their own business. They're looking for something that's flexible, that they have control over. And then there's a tremendous amount of training and mentoring that goes with it because we literally hand them a business in a box. It's everything. When you go through the training, we give you your website, your business cards, a structured business model, a, a marketing plan, the Facebook fan page. We do everything. Even when they come here for training, we even do a photo shoot. So they have professional photos that they can go out with. So my point is we are helping other entrepreneurs to grow as well. And the goal is we don't want the women, the Swan School owners to be solopreneurs forever. We're grooming them so that they can eventually hire on a virtual assistant or hire on a, another, you know, person to help them book their classes, someone to do sales and marketing for them, hire on it. You know, so that's not just doing it themselves. We want them to be able to think beyond themselves and think, I don't want to just make this money for myself, but I'm going to create a job for someone else as well and go from there. So that's what we're doing. Um, I, and I'm really, really thrilled and really excited. That's really awesome. And it's funny, as I've been talking to more and more professionals and more and more people, it's like a rising tide raises all ships, mm. right? And I just love that quote. You started out with your business and then you have did the school of hard knocks, so to speak, of figuring out all the little pieces that need to be there and everything that you need to do to be successful. And now you're offering it to others to be able to have a business in a box 
that don't have to go through all of the the school of hard knocks. <laughs> right. And that's, you know what, it's, it's so true because that's the thing that I tell them. I say, you know what, I'm going to skip you past all of the mistakes that I made and say, don't do that, but instead do this. So my thing is I'm giving them what works. And I'm very, very fortunate that I've been in this business for a long time. I started volunteering to teach etiquette in 1997, and I started my etiquette company in 2003. So I'm taking all of those years of, like you said, just the school of hard knocks, all of the, the, the trial and error sort of things. And I'm saying, don't do this stuff, but do this. Here's what works. Here's how you're going to streamline this process. So when they leave, they have not only, they're not just kind of randomly doing their business, but we are plugging them in to all of the tools that they need to run their business efficiently. And one really quick example of that is, you know, when I first got started in this business, Anytime I did a speaking engagement or if I went to some sort of trade show or something and I set up shop or, or what have you, or, you know, anything like that, we would put out a clipboard and we'd put the piece of paper on there with the lines on it and we'd say, hey, sign up for our email list. But one of the things that I discovered over time is that having people sign up for an email list or having people drop their business card into a bowl is a time killer and it can be a money killer as well. The time killer is that you spend all of this extra time putting those email addresses into your email system or, or what to into a spreadsheet and then onto an email system or either people don't write legibly and so you know you might lose out on a really great connection because you just couldn't really read the writing. So what I did later on, what I what I learned was the first step before I had a paid email marketing program was to open up a spreadsheet and let people type in their email addresses right there themselves. Or you can either open up your website to the page that has the form for them to fill out and they can fill out their form right then and there and it can go directly into your system. Saves a lot of time, saves them time. You know you've got the correct information and of course then you're following all the can spam act <laughs> rules as well, you know. And so that's just one example of making sure that they have a system in place to work their business well, and also taking them past all of those things that I did in the early days that weren't the best thing to do. You know, I've learned some new things, and so why not share it with these ladies and give them something that's going to help them? And everything that we look for for them, as far as their operational system is concerned, all of their setup, it's either find things that are free or no cost, so that this way their startup efforts for their business are not as expensive either. And what's great about that too, you know, for me as a business coach, a lot of times as an entrepreneur is starting out, they have to go out and seek out that mentorship from someone. Whereas mm -hmm. in your process, it sounds like the mentorship is built in. It is. The mentorship is built in. When they graduate from our training program, initial training is five days long, and it takes place at our headquarters here in Carlsbad, California. After the five days that, you know, you go back to your hometown, we have a 30 and 60 day kind of incubator. So we meet by phone once a week, starting the week after initial training. And my goal during those phone calls are to get them to having their first event. We have all of our candidates select a date that they're going to hold their very first class that's at least 90 days after initial training. Because what I don't want folks to do is go through the training and then go home and do nothing. So if they have something on the calendar that they're working toward, and then they're meeting with me every week collectively as a group, it'll get them closer and closer. So first we do once a week, second month we do every other week, and then the third month we have a video conference training, and, and that is every single month until thy kingdom come. And so everyone go into the pool with everyone else, and so we're all on that video conference call every month. The great thing is there's always mentorship, there's training. And then in addition to that, the space where I am right now, I am accessible to them. I make myself accessible to our licensees. And that's very, very important to me at this particular stage. So right now, I'm committed to them for this growing part of my business. So they actually have the ability to make an appointment with me any time and there's no cost to it it's unlimited if they get a client we help walk them through that process 
initially so that that way they can be confident. But of course, as time goes on, we definitely will have other individuals that will be in the area of leadership. So that way they can be able to take those mentorship calls and so forth. But for right now, I'm it. And I'm totally committed to them. Well, and what's neat about that, too, is you are known as a national expert in etiquette. And as yeah. you're out doing all of the national news and talk shows and all of the amazing stuff that you've been on, that is building your business as well as building their business, too. So we're working hard to really spread the Swan brand, make it available, make people aware of the fact that we're here so that when folks hit our website, whatever city they're in, we want to be able to serve them. As I mentioned before, we now have 17 Swan schools throughout the United States, and our goal in three years is to have 300 Swan schools throughout the United States. That's my goal. And do you have any desire to expand globally? Yes. So the goal in three years is to have 300 Swan schools throughout the United States and 50 internationally. We're definitely on track to to meet those goals. Well, we do have listeners in over 15 Mm. countries. Wow. So if someone from a international market wanted to start a Swan school, Do you offer anything for them to be able to do any training virtually? Yes, we do have virtual training, and that is uh, for our international market. And so those individuals who are in other countries and they want to go through our training, we have a very unique training, especially for them. And uh, they would be able to, you know, of course, they'd contact us and we'll get them in and put them through the process. And I would love, love, love to. So, yes, absolutely. That would be so awesome. So if you Mm -hmm. are listening and you are outside of the United States and you are fed up with people being so inconsiderate and you want to (laughs) teach them some etiquette, (laughs) do the world a favor. Reach out to Elaine because we need (laughs) more etiquette on our planet. Wouldn't you agree? We do. It just seems like right now in our society, just be kind to each other and know the ways to be able to be respectful towards each other, which ultimately Mm -hmm. is etiquette, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it is. It really is. And and a lot of times people think etiquette is a bunch of rules and guidelines and very staunch things to follow. And yes, there is most certainly protocol that's necessary in a variety of situations. But the bottom line when it comes to etiquette and manners, it really has to do with the way we treat one another and the way we conduct ourselves around people. That is the bottom line. It's really about putting others at ease. It's about making sure that we're being sensitive to other people and using what I refer to as our three core values, which is respect, honesty, and consideration. And you can most certainly apply any one of those three core values to any given situation in life. With that, we are going to take a quick break for our sponsor, and we will be right back. This episode is sponsored by the book, Freedom to Fly, the visionary leader's guide to unlocking your unique freedom code to confidently create more impact, influence, and income. Get your copy of this best-selling book on Amazon.com. Welcome back. I am here with Elaine Swan, who is a national etiquette expert and a dear friend of mine. Elaine, you are a wealth of knowledge. And for our listeners, what are some business etiquette tips that you could impart to help add to their business and add to their life that might help them give their business wings? Sure. So a couple of things that we, I definitely want to make sure that I share that we should be focusing on our three core values of good manners. And that sounds very simple but it's so, so true. And the core of that is respect, honesty, and consideration. Whether you are sending an email or returning a phone call or connecting with a client or potential partner, just think about those three core values. Am I being respectful of this person's time? Am I being respectful of of their craft? Am I honest in my business dealings? Am I being considerate of what I'm saying and what I'm doing, how I'm behaving? Am I being considerate of others when I'm doing this? And so that's really, really helpful. So a couple of things that I do want to share, let's say, for example, we're talking about being respectful of people's time. You know, we're all really busy, most especially as far as entrepreneurs are concerned. And so one tip I'd like to share is the respectfulness and time as far as email communication is concerned. If someone sends you an email It's really important for you to be respectful of their time and their effort by responding to that email message within a timely manner. 
and a timely manner as far as business is concerned is anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. You definitely want to get back to a person within that time frame. If you don't and you're just not able to, that's all right because there are some instances where maybe we're traveling and we're and we don't have complete access or maybe we just can't get to it in that moment for a, a variety of reasons. But when you do eventually respond to the person, if you have gone beyond that 24 to 48 hour time period, make sure you acknowledge the fact that it has taken some time. So that should be one of the first things to apologize for your delay in responding and don't go into all of the theatrics and so forth unless it's absolutely something that's on a need to know basis. But do acknowledge the fact that it has taken you extra time and then go on into the rest of the conversation. So 24 to 48 hours. And if you do go beyond that, make sure you acknowledge the fact that you have taken a little extra time and be respectful of their time by notifying them of that. So that's one tip that I'd like to make sure to share. What's another tip? The other is when you're emailing people, okay, and if you're having a, a lengthy conversation back and forth, back and forth, when the subject matter of the email changes, then you should change the subject so that this way you do two things. One, you draw attention to the fact that this is new information, and two, you're allowing the person to be able to find that email a little easier if they have to kind of go back and dig through it. So let's say, for example, you're contacting a person and you're talking about you know, whatever project you're working on and you're going back and forth and so on and so forth. And then eventually the conversation shifts and changes and says, okay, great. Now that we've solidified everything with the project, let's set up a time to meet. And so now you're going to start talking about what day and time you're going to meet. So change the subject matter of the email. So you can just change it and say upcoming meeting, or if someone had already mentioned the day of the week, then you can say Thursday's meeting. And now you're just kind of going back and forth as far as the time is concerned. So when the subject matter changes, then you change the subject. So those are two things that are really important as far as etiquette is concerned. Of course, I can go on and on. The other thing is we do a lot of networking, especially as entrepreneurs, and we kind of go out and we're exchanging business cards and and so on and so forth, it's really important for you to recognize that your business cards are not flyers. And so you shouldn't just go around passing out your business card, thrusting it into everyone's hand without really making a connection with them. Spend a little time with that person, connect with them, and then share your card. But in terms of getting their card, here's the part that can be very inconsiderate. You see somebody with their card in their hand and you walk up to them and you say, can I have a card too? For what? Have we made a connection? Is there some sort of exchange here that we're doing? Or, or you just want one of my cards? So be mindful of your cards that you're not passing them out like flyers. And before you ask for someone's card, make sure that you have made some sort of connection with them instead of just being a collector of business cards. Which brings me to my next point. And I mentioned this kind of earlier. So not only is there a can spam act as far as email lists are concerned, but do not take anyone's business card and add it to your email list without their permission, all right? Do not collect cards, Absolutely. and then the next thing you know, they're getting your monthly or weekly tip. Don't do it with business cards, and do not do it with your LinkedIn connections. That is highly inappropriate. It's uh, also illegal, and it's quite rude. <laughs> yes, it's a good way to get blacklisted in my book. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, you oh, took yeah. my car, you put me on your list, and now I'm getting spammed by you. No, thank yes. you. I would also add on the networking thing of have your photo on your business card because that oh, makes a big difference for me. Yes, um, I'm a very visual person, and I'm way better with faces than I am with names. And yes. so if I look at a business card and I see their photo, I remember our conversation when mm -hmm. I see their photo. When mm. I look at the business card and I see a name, I'm like, who was that? Who what did was he talk this? about? Yes, yes. When I get a card and it doesn't have a photo on it, I actually like jot down a couple notes on it. So when I go to follow mm -hmm. up later that I can remember our conversation. But I just oh, know with good. me that being very visual I remember yes. faces way better than I remember names. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. that's so-and-so. And we talked about X, Y, Z. And yeah. another little trick that I've recently done is I say that I've gone green with my card. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I've created a digital card that has my photo and my oh. information and everything on it. Yeah. And so I email or text 
my card to them. Yeah, that's great. And all you have to do is just create your own contact information in your phone and then send that on over to the person. Exactly. That makes it kind of nice. You're mm-hmm. going green and it, you don't end up in the pile, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Thank you so much for those tips, Elaine. So oh, if welcome. someone wants to get in touch with you, they're interested in your school of protocol, how would they find you? If you're interested in connecting with me and learning more about the programs that we offer, whether you're interested in just training for yourself as an individual to help you develop your professional presence, or if you're interested in launching a SWAN School of Protocol in your city, just visit my website at swanschool.com, and that's SWAN with two N, swanschool.com. Thank you so much, Elaine. I really appreciate you being on the show today. And as always, remember, it's time to fly. Give your business wings. A big thank you to this episode's sponsor, Freedom to Fly, the visionary leader's guide to unlocking your unique freedom code to confidently create more impact, influence, and income. Get your copy of this best-selling book on Amazon.com. Join our flock. Stay informed of all things Time to Fly by subscribing to our newsletter at timetoflypodcast.com. And be sure to tune in to our next show.